kind of, kind of took a sidestep to the direct producer room, realm, and I was like at the bottom. So it was like having to learn everything. So I wanted to kind of get my knowledge up to like where it is as an actor. So now I kind of feel like there's they're kind of like parallel with each other. So I. I'm very confident to go back. I'm actually moving back to LA next week for the first time in like six and a half years. Oh, did you go home? Um, yeah, I've been back in Virginia and up to New York a lot. So I built a home, like a, a movie studio in Virginia Beach. Uh, so I was shooting all my projects out there. I even had Michael Madsen, Adrian Grenier from Montage out there, Mimi Rogers. Yeah, we did a we did a film with them out there too. It was cool, man. My mom's my makeup artist. My dad was in the back cooking craft service, like. So it was like a family ordeal. One more and then I'll be quiet. Can you tell us when you're actually finished with Dystopia? Oh, Before yeah. Before it goes Yeah, line. Dystopia's done right now. We're just trying to get it to the right family. Network family, yeah. So we did actually finish all eight episodes. Yeah, we're just trying to get it. Yeah, Sorry, so thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I'm just, I'm just so excited to finally move back to L.A. I haven't auditioned in like six and a half years, so I'm ready to get back in there. And, but I just jumped on a new show, I'll tell you guys, because I haven't really announced it, but it's uh, called The Bay. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on its fourth season. It's won like four Emmys. I didn't know about it until I just got called by the producer. And uh, I'm excited. I get to play a LAPD police officer. Finally, I look old enough to play a cop. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm 30, I'll be 36 this year. So I was just like, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> so I'm excited, guys. I'm, I, you know, I've always wanted to hold a gun in my hand in a in a movie, so in a show. You know what I mean? Not like a high school book. You know. <laughs> so when does the bay come out, or when can we watch it? It's on. It's on now. You can uh, kind of catch up. Uh, the third season got really popular, and uh, the fourth season's uh, they're gonna have some really cool twists and turns. So cool. it should be really cool. Awesome. Uh, we got a hand right there. Hey. Um, favorite episode, both of you? Favorite episode is all the ones that have Michael Copon in <laughs> I, am, I am the president of the Michael Copon fan club, <laughs> so uh, I love this man and everything that he does, even though he's not a man, Shut he's up. a little boy. Shut up, <laughs> Seriously, what's your favorite episode? <laughs> Horses on the Moon, Forever Red. Horses on the Moon, that's the best episode, because it makes no sense at all. <laughs> Horses on the Moon and we fight the Beetleborgs. Hello. You tell me, I don't know. <laughs> Motorcycle that breaks in the air. I'd say my name, obviously I've said this a million times, but Movie Madness. Uh, you guys see Movie Madness. For us, uh, I was newly 18, fresh off the boat, and boom. I get into this movie world, and then now I'm on Universal Studios movie lot, filming where some of the greatest films have been filmed. And for me, that was probably like a dream come true. Uh, I was like, oh, this is where Back to the Future, like, uh, like it was crazy, because we still had some of the sets from the previous sh uh, movies and shows back then. So we shot Movie Madness all in Universal Studios, so that was pretty cool. I, I felt Plus the same way, yeah. in the Fox Tower. I was yeah. like, oh my god. That was, I was like, that's... It was so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> this is Hill Valley. I tried to run really fast and go back. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Um, have you been in any Power Ranger movies? Um, well, what the producer did is we would shoot three episodes and then he would compile it into a movie. Yeah. So technically, yeah, but not like Steve Cardenas' movie. Yeah, yeah. Steve yeah, Cardenas that. got to be in the in the big Power Ranger movie. Yeah. Which I went to go watch when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell Steve that and he hates that because he's like, "Stop it, make me feel old." <laughs> I'm like, I was I watched you when I was a kid, man, in the theater. Oh, it's like way I should run around like that. All right, get Steve on FaceTime right now. Yeah, <laughs> please do. And he'll be here. Put him on the screen over here. Yeah. Um, I see a hand all the way in the back. Oh, hello. Uh, um, what was the audition process like for uh, you to get your role as a Power Rangers? What was the audition process? Well, you want to go first? Okay. Um, the audition process for me. I lived in Miami at the time. Um, I'd only been living there for like I don't know six, seven months. And um, <clears throat> my uh, my manager, she calls me up and she says, "Hey, I have an audition for you. I want you to go out for it. It's in Hollywood, which is in it's actually Florida, not Hollywood, California." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but she was like, "Yeah, it's in Hollywood." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 
uh, what is it? She says, Power Rangers. I said, nope, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. And the reason why, I didn't want to do it because I could not stand Power Rangers. Not because I had anything against the show, it's because I grew up in Virginia. We, we discussed this. I grew up in Virginia, I had very long hair. And as a kid with very long hair, every damn kid in the neighborhood came up to me and said, you're like Tommy. You've got hair like Tommy. You have a ponytail just like Tommy. I had no idea who the hell Tommy was. I did not care. I did not care. I did not want to have anything to do with Tommy or Thomas or anything like that. No. So, yeah. You still look like Tommy, though. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they said, um, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Seriously, I'm gonna kick you right in the head. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they said, uh, uh, my, my manager said, no, don't, don't worry about it. Just, I explained to her, look, I really don't want to do it. I don't like Power Rangers. I didn't know anything about Power Rangers, but I don't want to do it. I don't like Power Rangers. She said, don't worry. Go out for it. You won't get it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, nice. That's nice. That's nice. So, well, I mean, because the thing was is that what she knew was they were actually doing a nationwide search for the new red guy. Um, because it was like, this was the transition from Turbo to In Space, and this was like uh, Selwyn, who played TJ, he was the red one before, and now he was going to step down and become the blue one, so who's going to be the new red guy? So they literally went all over the country, which is why they ended up in Miami at one point, and they're looking for the red guy. I went in there, and I was just like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want this. That's why they picked me. I didn't want it. I swear to God, like any of you, you guys know who Brennan Mejia is, right? He was, um, what the, which one was he? Dino Charge Red. Dino Charge, thank you. I can never remember that. I always want to say Samurai or something like that, but whatever. He was Dino Charge. He had the same thing. He went out for Power Rangers a few years before uh, Dino Charge, and he went in there and he was so excited to get it and, or, and so excited to be you know, just auditioning for it, and they were like, mm, sorry, you know, maybe next time or whatever. By the time it came around for him to audition for Dino Charge, he was just like, screw it, I don't even care anymore. And that's when they wanted it. <laughs> it's because you have that attitude of, I don't need you. You you guys would need me, if anything. That's what they want. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, it makes no sense at all. That's I mean, true. Yeah, you, you can go in there with the greatest energy and like, I know everything about Power Rangers. I know who threw what kick in what scene and what episode and yada yada, whatever. Now, you go in there and they you just say, Tommy who? I don't know. Kicks? I, whatever. I've done the kicks. I don't even care. Then they're just crazy about you. <laughs> That's what it was for me. So there we go. Yeah. Mine was kind of similar. I actually had to turn down the full ride scholarship to play football at Virginia Tech and some other colleges to go out to LA go live in my truck. I had a 1982 Toyota pickup truck. So the first eight and a half months was basically, which was funny, I found a mattress that was someone was throwing away in Beverly Hills, so it was like brand new, but it said Williamsburg, Virginia on the print. And I was like, oh, this is like, thank you, God. <laughs> this is great. So I threw it in the back of my Toyota, used to shower at Valley's when that existed. <laughs> Valley's total fitness. Um, used to shower at Valley's and then start my day. Anyways, my, I did modeling for about six and a half, seven months, but my first acting audition was from my commercial agent. They were like, you should try acting. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, you know, you can act to be in like movies and stuff. And I was like, you, well, you, can, you can try out to be in movies? And my, my agent was like, Michael, this is Hollywood. Like, of course. <laughs> like, I didn't even know that, I was so naive. So she's like, all right, here, here's what you do. You take these sides, you memorize these lines, you go in. So I didn't even know I was auditioning for Power Rangers which was at first, because they used like a different pair of sides for yeah. a show called Wizards at the time, which was, yeah. I don't know. They did something similar to me. Yeah, I, I, don't remember I didn't see Power Rangers, so I didn't even know it was audition for Power Rangers until I got the call back. So I went in, did the lines, it was like a father-son issue, and of course I had, you know, understanding of that. So uh, I was able to tap into some, to some like emotional banks for that audition, and then I got a call back. And then from there, uh, I got another callback and another callback. And then they get to the point where they're down to like the final 10 and they do a, what they call a mix and match. So they bring in the two options for red, the two for yellow, the two for uh, blue, and they see who looks good together. So that's pretty much um, you know, what they did for us. But 
funny for Time Force, it was just nine because they, they knew that they wanted, there was no, uh, no, no one else for the blue, so they knew they wanted me because originally the blue character was supposed to be a James Dean, blonde hair, blue eyes. That's why he's named Lucas Kendall, like the Ken doll. <laughs> so they wanted a Ken doll. Really? Yeah, that's really what they told me. Really? But, but because they went so swipe right with me, like, like they were saying, you're like the ethnic James Dean or something. <laughs> so like, whatever that meant, whatever that meant in like 2000. Yeah. Jonathan was, you're like the oh, yeah. ethnic yeah. James Dean. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll take it. So I went in, um, I matched with both groups. So they put me in with both groups, both Red Rangers, both yellow, blue, and all that. I mean, yellow and green, and all that. So I got to meet everybody. I met Aaron, Jason, before all that. But I even have the audition video on VHS, and uh, all of them are mad because they're like, I gotta see this, I gotta see this. But if you, it's crazy. If I showed you guys right now who the other options were, you would totally have picked Jason Vaughn and Aaron Cahill because it was just like a match made in heaven. You know what I mean? They're just like, they're just like amazing people. And to see what they were up against, it was like, oh, uh, like even I would pick them if I was a producer because they're just so awesome. And the cast that got put together was like. To this day, I tell everyone that all the other shows I've done, the only cast that I really love is like the Time Force cast. We're like the show friends. We're like literally on set, we we're like the show friends, and offset, we still kept in touch with each other. So, like, we really all love each other, like brothers and sisters and stuff like that. So, that was my process. It took me out of my truck in my first apartment in Valencia, um, and I lived with the Yellow Ranger, Debbie. And uh, we, we got a two bedroom in Valencia, and uh, that was uh, kind of what started my life and my career in, in LA. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I got a hand right here again. Hello. Um, this is for. Don't worry, I get it. <laughs> Up, Experience for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what was it like fighting the turtles? What was it like fighting the turtles? <laughs> <laughs> you started off so well. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, when we, uh, the, my show, my series had just started, really. I think it was like the fourth, fourth episode. episode. Yeah, third or fourth. Yeah, it was really early in. Um, <clears throat> but even by then, the producers are like, oh damn, this is really going well already. Kids are watching it because it's basically Star Wars. Everybody loves it, this is cool. So they said to us, so we're gonna bring in the Ninja Turtles. And we're all like, why? Why would you do that? Did you keep them all the turtle possessed you to think that that's a good idea? Why would you do that? There was a reason for them to do it. The reason why they did it was because the, the, uh, the Ninja Turtle show was really not doing that well with ratings. Um, so they kind of figured that, you know, we bring it in a show that's just starting off, that's right. good, that'll help with the Ninja Turtles, right? No, it, it, nothing for the Ninja Turtles. But for us, it certainly was, well, I mean, we all we all have a story now to tell that, yes, I beat the crap out of Raphael and Michelangelo and Leonardo and all that stuff, and nobody else in Power Ranger dumb can say that. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty epic. We get to say that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, bizarre is a good word. Were the turtles Saban based? What's that? Were they Saban based? The show was. The, the, the Ninja Turtle show the was show Saban based. Yeah. The, tur the turtles, the, like the, the, the IP for the uh, turtles itself is not. But yeah, just the show. Yeah. Which is where they came up with Venus, the girl turtle. Oh. And we were just like, why? why? What? Where did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> that was weird. Uh, I have a question for Michael. So yeah. your, your other part of the show, uh, Monk Tree Hill, obviously. I'm yeah. uh, just curious that, as to how that was, you know, being in that show was and being in Tony and Wellington and just, you know, being a part of the cast, even though you kind of came on a, a second season there, like an established cast already. And yeah. That, process was. that was tough. Uh, well, yeah, it was tough in many ways. Uh, so Power Ranger story was pretty cool, epic, first audition, get it. Cool. Right. After that, no. Five <laughs> years. 1,482 auditions I kept track of where I heard the word no wow. until I actually got on One Tree Hill. And that changed my life on another level to actually be called Michael Copan in the streets. Like that was like, that was after One Tree Hill because no one recognized me as, I remember the first time I was walking in Santa Monica from and I said, are you Michael Copan? And I was like, 
yeah. <laughs> like, it was really weird. Like, that was my, I remember that first encounter. Like, I think every actor will remember that because it's weird when someone you don't know says that. Yeah. Um, at first, because you're like, because I don't know you. How do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of weird. No, but, but then you're kind of like, oh, this is cool. But when I got on the show, um, it, it was, it was really hard for me. I, I mean, I might have looked like confident, because of course Felix is very confident, he's like this guy, but I was at the time in a very different spiritual walk in my life. I, at that point, I, I didn't even uh, kiss a girl for a year because I was trying to like sacrifice different things in my life spiritually and, and fasting from different things. So Sophia Bush was the first girl I kissed in a year and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, this, like, and I'm playing this bad boy like womanizer, like, like this is crazy. And then I get on this show and all the all the other actors were like, you know, not as because they were doing their thing. They were just they weren't mean. They just were like doing their thing. And I thought they were gonna be like, hey, Michael. And it wasn't like that. So I, was, I get on. I'm like, hey. They're like, hey. And they're like doing their thing. And I saw. So I'm just like this kind of like, like okay. I hope I do really well. And like one of the first things they had me shoot actually, you know, was the coming out the pool. You know. Close your ears, little kids, but you're <laughs> naked, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, and like, I thought they were going to give me like boxer shorts or like something. No. <laughs> they gave me a, a girl's stocking to put all my stuff in with a string around it. <laughs> so I'm just wearing this string and a stocking. <laughs> Saying hi to everyone for the first time. Like, hi, I'm Michael. Nice to meet you. They're like, oh, hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? And then you know you're trying to talk to someone and they just keep looking down. They're like, so where, so where are you from? <laughs> oh, you live in LA? And you're just like, dude, look me in the eye. Like, I'm a lady, girl. You're like, stop looking at my boots. Stop. Ah, look at here. So, um, so that was my first day on top of everyone. You know. Then I got to show my perfect backstroke and swimming stroke, and I was like, hang out the pool, do the lines. And then the third thing is, obviously, if you watch the show, I'm not Spanish. I don't speak Spanish really well. And I, I kind of lied and told the producers I spoke fluent Spanish, so they wrote the whole script in Spanish. Okay. So then the producers saw me in the first scene, and I'm like, yo no uso eso. They're like, <laughs> My, I thought you said you spoke fluent Spanish, and I go, well, okay, I, I, I'm real, not Mexican Filipino. I'm actually Filipino and half white. But I said, but you know, was, I'm laughing about it now, but it was real. So they were really thinking about recasting because they really wanted this role to be Spanish. And then I kind of like, I said, listen, 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 you know, I kind of did the whole spiel. I said, I really, I'm, I'm an actor. You know, you know, my, you know what I can do. I said, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'm, I'm going to work really hard at. You know, you know, learning Spanish, learning how to sound as authentic as possible. I said, but honestly, would you have given me the role if I told you I didn't speak Spanish? And the producers were like, okay, touche. So, so, luckily, luckily, I got, I got a lucky break. That's what, that's what the ho Hollywood calls a lucky break. Yeah. Because <laughs> literally, uh, sometimes you get to that point where you just, I'm not promoting lying, but I'm, I mean. White lies are okay. Like, I mean, because like, I did speak some Spanish, you know what I mean? Some. Yeah. Um, hola. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Old child laughing. Um, um, so, nah. Uh, so, anyways, I did the best I could, in that, um, and that was my process. Got on the show. We hit TRL two weeks later to promote the show. Yeah. So, I'm dancing. I don't know if you guys saw me on TRL. I was singing and dancing beatboxing on TRL, so that was a dream come true, and because uh, TRL was like the show back in the day, so that first two months was like the craziest whirlwind, like nothing to up here experience for me, and I'll never forget it. When you guys like the castles on TRL, like, they went nuts, like just all the fan days. And it went crazy. Like I remember the, the limo ride to TRL. We were going through like we were the president of the United States. They had to like, there was just a pool of fans in the streets of Times Square and they literally had to push. Police people were like, get out the, move, move. Like, cause like they're not moving and we can hear the police yelling cause they were tr they're trying to get this limo through the crowd. And, and, and it's like one of those movie moments where, where the fans are literally on the front of the limo like, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Chad, Chad, because they love like you know obviously Chad and James and stuff. So it was just a crazy moment, and that was just like a like I, like two months ago I was just you know eating canned soups and <laughs> ramen noodles and you know what I mean now I'm about to have steak dinner and I'm at TRL. So it was like a complete night day experience. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so, and I fought a turtle. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's up, man? What's your question? Uh, I would say a skinny Seth Rogen, uh, as opposed to a uh, Tommy Oliver. Yeah, that, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much. That's so much. That's so much. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> maybe it's the lighting. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's the lighting. Yeah. Uh, Stick with Tommy Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have to ask uh, two questions. Uh, was that a wig? I hope it was a wig. On what, on the show? Yeah. No. Oh. Who, who talked you into that haircut? Huh? Who talked you into that haircut? Were you all raised that color? Oh. Well, when you want to be on TV, well, and guess... Savon says you're going to do this, you do this. When they say jump, you say out loud, yeah. Vanessa. Because that's it. Oh, yeah, that's that's that makes sense. Brother. Yeah, that's it. That makes so, sense. When they first went out for it, they, um, they told me it was going to be a wig. Oh. When I touched down in LA, they were like, nah! <laughs> <laughs> so they took me out and they, uh, yeah, they bleached it. And that was. The most painful thing I've been through in my entire life. More than uh, fighting the tur bleach. more than fighting the turtle means. They had to bleach it in stripes, nice. which took eight hours. And I never before that never once ever put anything in my hair, uh, like no bleach, no color, oh, nothing like that. So it's um, super sensitive. Yeah. This is the color that my scalp was. Oh my God. Cool. They, uh, they, uh, the, the the woman that did it. Um, she was our uh, head uh, makeup artist, and she told me that she felt sorry for having to do it to me because she knew, or she could see how painful it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I like, I had tears come down my eyes, but I'm just like, nah, let's do this. <laughs> so happy to be Power Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. And um, I have a lot of Apache blood in me. My hair grows, my hair grows really fast. So getting that done, that bleach was every three weeks or so. Yeah. For a year. That sounds lovely. Crazy. Yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> Did you cut it on wrap day? What's that? Did you cut it when you wrapped? No, they would not even let me do that. They were like, no, you're still under contract with us for another year. So oh. you kind of have to do whatever we say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. Yeah. I Oh, you're right. Oh, there we go. Somewhere during one high school. You guys went to? Cox High. Okay. I actually went to Deep Creek in Chester. Okay, Chester. Yeah. Dead Creek. Okay. I got my education from Deep Creek. <laughs> That's what I say. If you, if you know, if you're in Virginia, you know where Deep Creek is. Yes. Not, it's not a good area. No, I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up in like Camelot. So, okay. like, yeah, I had bullet holes in my garage door and stuff. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Both Mike and Mayday, and what was your best moments and best things and Lucas? What was your best moments and shows you've done with those characters? Best experience and best moments, best experience as a character that worked? Best moments, best experience as a character that worked? You got enough. I mean, I have a few. I, I would just say the green screen work. That, that when I did the Deer's Dream Date and they had to fly me through the air, like doing, doing the, put me on the harness and swinging me around. That was kind of cool. Like doing stuff like that was pretty dope. And riding the dune buggies through the desert. With, uh, yeah, that, that type of stuff was dope. Yeah. Uh, doing the voiceover for me killing the hell out of Zordon. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was fun. I never met Dave up until then. Um, uh, and they were just like, yeah, you're going to go in there, you're going to to Zordon, and I was like, really? <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. And, and what? And your sister. And my sister? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the worst moments, I'll say this real quick, uh, worst moment when I was reading the script for the last one for um, 
uh, countdown to destruction, and they said, he leans over her, and in the script it was like, he leans over her, and then a single teardrop falls from him, and then it touches her, and then it wakes her up, and I was like, really? <laughs> Throw me there, we're doing the teardrop coming back to life thing. What are you talking about? Come on. That really annoyed me. <laughs> we got a hand right over here. Hi. What roles would you guys both like to play if you ever had the opportunity? Iron Man. <laughs> I am Iron Man. <laughs> he's, he's always on his way out, you know? Nice. Okay. Robert Downey, so... Tony Stark's long, some ball stuff or something. Any, any, any rocks, like any move with the rock where I play like his either younger brother or son? Body double? Something like that. Because I mean, I got to be the younger version of him, I always say I'm the pebble. But, you know, I really, really would like to be in a movie with him. If you smell what the pebble. That's not bad. That's really good. So, Iron Man for you, huh? Yeah, Iron Man. Vader. Vader for me. Yeah. The wrestler. Knocked up four. You're like, oh, Chris. We're thinking about bringing in you for a knocked up four. Oh, boy. Straight to Amazon. <laughs> Straight to Disney Plus. Hand was up over here yeah. somewhere. Hand up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really loved Power Rangers in space because it was like a, for me it was like a breakout season because it took the Power Rangers out of Angel Grove and in space. And no, it did. And adopted a more darker, deeper concept. And that's why it was a standout series for me. But, um, my question was like, what's your favorite uh, or standout memory with the cast on the set? Oh, favorite, uh, uh, favorite memory? You know, one of the one of the scenes that I really liked the most. I actually wasn't even in it. Um, everybody else was in it. All the rest of the cast was in it. But I got to watch it from you know I was off I was off set. I was uh, just sitting there right off set watching it. Um, it was in actually Captain of Destruction where we did the whole, we totally. My season, we ripped off everything. Everything that was good, we ripped it off. So, from Star Wars, Star Trek, Starship, hell, anything with Star in it, we ripped that off. Um, but then we ripped off Spartacus, too. And I was like, really? Okay, let's, yeah. Let's up the ante a little bit. So we have a scene where um, the bad guys are like, you know, oh, bring me the Power Rangers. Uh, and then, like, one one of the one of the people, like the, um, the, uh, the background actors, they come up and they're like, I'm the Blue Ranger, and then the next guy is like, you know, I'm the Red Guy, I'm the I'm the yeah. Yellow Ranger, and all this, and then even Bolt and Skull are like, you know, I'm the Gray Ranger, and I'm the Polka Dot Ranger, and everybody's some kind of Ranger, and all that. I thought that was really cute because it's that's Spartacus, and I was like, that's really cute. Just, we just did Spartacus and Power Rangers. <laughs> when else do we do that? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I think all of Saban's shows ripped off everything. Oh yeah, Time yeah. Force's first. Thing was totally a Terminator coming back. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We basically got down and I was like, um, that's yeah. kind of Terminator right there. Yeah, RPM was Mad Max. Just yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, no, ours was Mad Max too because we actually had Rancic. He was in Mad Max. Oh, okay. well. And the yeah. whole Doom Buggies in the Desert thing was the whole yeah. Mad Max thing. Yeah. We had a whole episode to that. Okay. So that's crazy. They, they literally were that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Good. Do you think that that scene there, because that was something I've never seen a Stronema that at the end, that dark and that, do you think that that was also a, the, one of the more darker scenes in, in space that, you know, that was even darker for Mel. I've never seen Melody's character be that dark. You know, I mean, so, I've seen her, the standard kill them all, but you know, she was about to wipe out an entire city right there in the middle of Age of Crown. Well, she's a bad guy. I mean, that's what they do, right? Plus, she's a Borg. See, Star Trek, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so at that point, she's a Borg. I mean, yeah. just totally. So, yeah, okay. you know, yeah I it, didn't it, know. it was a little darker than I suppose. I mean, yeah. she was ready to just liquidate a whole city. 800 people in front of her just because. Yeah. 
she didn't, she woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That morning. I don't know. And my second part of that was the repelling that they did in that one. Did they do that in their costumes or was that their Japanese counterparts? The, the, which the, that going down the, at the end. In the, was, where, it in, was it in suit? With what, the helmets on? What, That's never the actors. Never the actors. Anytime that you see the, um, the characters with the helmets on, that's not the actors. Uh, ever since happened. the uh, second season of Power Rangers, I believe, they stopped doing that. I heard that in the first season of Power Rangers, they actually had the actors with the helmets on. Yeah. But the, the visor part in the front was so black that you really can't see out. Um, so, you know, they would try to do the fright scenes and somebody would get hurt or just, it would look ridiculous. Okay, so that is the stunt team. Oh, so they, yeah, they brought in a lot. Uh, they brought in the Japanese stunt team from Japan. Uh, the Japanese stunt team from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> the, the live team, uh, the live, uh, the live show team from Japan. Um, they can fight with their eyes closed. Yeah, literally. it's it's amazing watching them do these acrobatic stuff. Yeah, flip on, and they can. I, I know they can't see anything. Cause, yeah, when these are on, like, it's very hard. So yeah. Uh, Helmet's on, it's not the actor. And it's hot and sweaty, as, as you guys yes. cosplayers know. And imagine doing that in like 102 degree heat, for like for 14 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are like troopers. Yeah. They really make the show they work. Make the show. And I feel really the bad for the later seasons when they went to New Zealand to film, because that's terribly hot too. That's more hot. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Are you guys surprised at how long the longevity of Power Rangers? I'm not. No. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because of the consistency it's kept. Uh, a lot of people. I, I, I think the consistency is what's kept it, like kept the fan base there, um, and also what it stands for. You know, it really stands for something uh, united. Like all, no matter what color you are, what what height you are, any walk of life. You know, we can come together, work together to conquer a goal together and win. And, you know, and that's kind of like what our range essentially is about. So a lot of people, I think, relate to that, um, especially when you're your kids. You know, it's such a you know it's such a thing you look for, especially in a lot of you know, broken homes. You know, parents are separating because that a lot, a lot of kids turn to this too. Is because at least there's unity in this show for them mentally. And if there's stuff going on at home, you know, and colors and you know, kids. I heard I heard another fan. I never thought about this the other day. One fan came up to me and said, "Actually, right there, there, there he is, right there." He was like. <laughs> He was like, yeah, my mom taught me co ha colors through Power Rangers. He's like, colors that, red, good, that's blue. And I've never thought about that. Like, you can teach your kid colors in a fun way. Because you're like, that's the red ranger, that's the yellow. So I, I think it's just universally like great for, for the children community and as well as adults who want to, who, who want to still keep somewhere, somewhat like, you know, positive. You know? And I have a brother who has shaken baby syndrome, so like even sometimes when he gets too much input, he'll watch even Barney or something like that, even though he's he's 19 now, but sometimes like he, he needs that mentally for his to stimulate his brain in a different way, positive uh, vibes. But you know, even today he still watches like a lot of Disney shows, things like that. If there he wasn't really into Power Rangers as much, but like still the same type of energy, you know, of that show, just the positive vibes and stuff like that. I think it's really good. Yeah. Well, I mean that's why I watch the show. Very good. Oh, thanks. I like it. Very good. Very good. Right here. Hi. Uh, with Shout Factory releasing Sentai and DVD, have either of you been interested in checking out the seasons your show was based on? Uh, yeah, have I, you guys watched Super Hentai? I watched Mega Ranger. Yeah. It was insanely awesome. I loved Mega Ranger. It was uh, one of the more violent TV shows I've seen. Um, very first episode that I saw, I didn't. I haven't seen the entire uh, season of Mega Ranger, but uh, the very first episode I saw, Stuntman pulled me in, Takahito pulled me in. Oh, he said, yeah, he was like, oh, Christopher, why don't you watch this? And I was like, okay, sorry if that sounds racist, but that's actually how he sounded. Yeah. Um, exactly. He had very broken English. But he was like, yeah, I want you to watch this. So I watched it, and I was like, what the hell is this? And I was like, oh, Mega Ranger. I was like, oh, really? Um, the first thing he showed me was the Red Ranger, uh, full suit, helmet, everything. He's fighting uh, a bad guy. It's, it's a girl. Um, she's like, she's a bad guy. She's got like a monster thing, but you can see her face. Like she's got the, uh, she's got like an outfit on, but her face is uncovered. So you know, very beautiful girl and all that. 
they're getting into this fight, and at one point, the, the uh, Red Ranger, Kentadate, uh, that's the character's name, he does this thing where he goes and he back fists her right across the jaw, and then her face goes like this, and then she spits blood out everywhere, all over. It was like a blood fountain coming right out of her mouth, and I was like, that's so damn awesome! Why are we doing that? That's so cool! And then um, I saw, like immediately after that, I saw another episode We where, get sparks. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, we get sparks, yeah. I saw another episode after that where um, the, in Mega Nature, the, their version of uh, Ecliptor, his name was Captain Uganda. And Captain Uganda was fighting the Red Ranger. And actually, I'm going to stand up and show you all this. So he, uh, he's fighting the Red Ranger, right? And uh, they're out in a big field or something, and he's knocked the Red Ranger down. So the Red Ranger is laid down on the ground, like, you know, just like, oh, God, stop it, you know? <laughs> so Uganda is right over him. And his head is near a puddle, so he starts kicking the hell out of his head into the puddle. And they're showing the, 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 the actors, I mean, he's really kicking really? this dude. Yeah, he's kicking the hell out of his head. <laughs> it's right in the puddle. And his head is just going, please, why are you so mean to me? Yeah. So, yeah, I watched that and I was like, damn, we need to be doing this. <laughs> now I want to go watch mine. <laughs> I've never seen mine, but I want to go watch it now. It's Time Ranger is very much like Time Wars. It was like literally an adaptation. Yeah, yours was pretty much right on the story. Your it was. Mega yeah. and space was a little was a lot different, oh, but okay. but time and, and, and yeah, yeah. Time Ranger was. Time yeah. Ranger was yeah. Okay. Almost yeah. has the exact same story now. Good. I see a hand all the way in the back, Reacher. Uh, so I'm trying to think of all of the uh, Power Ranger seasons. Which which costumes are your favorites? Which costumes? <laughs> 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 what are you talking about, man? Come on. I actually got to say, yeah, I, my favorite are um, actually Space, Mighty Morphin, and uh, Time Force. I like the simplistic look of, of all of it, of like, like, like Space's colors. I think the, the one color that bugs me in Space is the yellow color. Every other color looks cool, and then the yellow just... Yes, the yellow just... You mean around the neck or on the Oh, no, no, it's not the yellow. It's it's when, like, his, see how the pink matches with the red? Yeah. I don't like that. Like, that bothers me a little. They should have made the pink a little more, like, darker. So that it looked like, yeah. But I love the space costumes, too. That's, I like when, when Robot they, touched me. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the helmets, do you guys still have the actual? Uh, oh god! <laughs> I tried to get one made two years ago. I was like seven. I just lost a lot of weight, so I was about seventy-five pounds um, bigger, like about two years ago. So I got it made then. So I tried, I tried it on actually right before I left to come here to see. I was, yeah, it was like really bad. <laughs> it looked funny. It looked, yeah, yeah, it does look right. All right. So I'm gonna get one made hopefully when I get. But I get to the, the, the physique that I want to get back to, then I'll probably get another uh, suit made. You could always, you know, they airbrush it so you have to airbrush the abs and all that. I did do that with Aaron Coney's brother. Oh, cool. Yeah, so me and Sierra, I don't know if you guys saw that online, but I did a, a, a body paint of my suit. Nice. So it's on my Instagram. Oh, yeah. So that was fun. We just did that. It was a cool experience. Sweet. It was cool. All right, we have a hand here, and then we're going to go you for the last question, but one, two, done. So if the yellow from In Space bothered you, how did you feel about the red and Quantum Ranger from Time Force? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the red and the other that, red ranger. Yeah, that, that kind of, I never got that either. Um, and yeah, and it, and it still bugs everyone because they're like so, because fans, sometimes little kids will come and be like, look, my pictures will be like, the red ranger. The red ranger. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, it was really confusing to the kids. Um, I don't know why they did that, but I guess I don't know. It did bug. It did bug me, but I do like the quantum suit the best. <laughs> I think he got lucky. I mean, yeah, Eric like did that whole that whole suit. Dan Dan being able to wear that suit to be the quantum ranger. That was like that was like probably one of my favorite like six rangers. Um, in a long time, is that quantum? Like, it, I like the his old sword, his like quantum morpher was really cool. I like red and black anyway. Like a lot of my decor at home is like black, all black, and 
she knows I wear like a lot of all, all black and red, uh, little hints of red. So that's why I like Quan. Uh, we're gonna go to the back here, and then, uh, she and then you, you're gonna finish it up. So, so go ahead. Are there any like behind the scenes stories of like something funny or anything that have on a set? I, I always tell. <laughs> any funny on set stories was the question. Yeah. We, a lot of inappropriate ones, but I think the, well, this one's kind of inappropriate. Um, like meaning, meaning, like me and Jason Font would just do a lot of just funny stuff, this guy, guy jokes and stuff. But uh, we did one where we, we were coming around the corner, and and the whole crew is like waiting to shoot the scene, and we we we're Rangers come around the corner and have to look up and see this, you know, obviously the the bad guys now ripped off his DNA fashion and they grew. So we like came around the corner. But instead of coming out like normal, we, we came into our underwear and our boxer shorts. We just came out like this, really. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, cut, cut. My, Jason, Michael, come on. We, waste the time. <laughs> we thought it was funny, but they, they didn't think it was that funny. So we hurry up and put our pants back on, and then we the scene again. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there it is. I have nothing to top that. I have nothing to say legally. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of folks, but. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of nice stuff that you're about. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we'll leave it at that, and we have our last question right over here. Hi. I wanted to see the helmets because I watched Caroline Joseph's video. Did you like the helmets? Yeah. Well, his actually fits on a head. Mine's like a rep, fake well, replica, so it doesn't even go on. Mine kind of does. It's a little janky. <laughs> the real ones look better than ours, because, but they didn't give it to us. Oh, my, the real one for my season is totally gone. Yeah, uh, on the shoulder. The real one for my season, they used it on SPD uh -huh. for like the first episode. Um, I don't know if y'all remember that, because in SPD they had two teams. A squad, yeah. A squad, B squad, B -squad yeah. So A squad, they had all of our helmets. Um, they just kind of recolored them and all that. And when that episode was done, they took all those helmets and they threw them in a wood chipper. Oh. Oh. And you're all going to say, why would they do that? I have no idea. <laughs> they're they're yeah. helmets. They can do whatever they want. That's crazy. That was yeah. terrible. I thought the A squad would like, like you guys get yours, and the A squad would have gotten theirs. Yeah, I even got a ring on my helmet. You guys think anything on the sets? No. Uh, yeah. 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 No way. No one's ever worked with that. They got my helmet. That's my season. They wouldn't let us. Alright, guys, we're um, pretty much out of time, but the last thing that I always love to end the Power Rangers panel for is you got it more. The hula dance? You got it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to see it more one time? Wait, 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 wait. I've seen Get it. Get your cameras ready. Here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You know, I have to have it every time I sit. Oh, I go first. Well, okay. Red Ranger. Uh, are we gonna, do we have a countdown or we just go? Just, just, go. Go. just go. Oh, okay, just go. fine. Screw it. Mine's real quick and easy. Here we go. Let's rock it! Time for Time Force! 